In this tutorial, we're going to look at arithmetic and geometric progressions, but more specifically, we're going to look at some contextual examples. So the first thing that we're going to need to be able to do is to read a question or read a scenario and determine whether it's best represented by an arithmetic or a geometric progression. We'll then know which formulas we can apply to that given question. So here we have an example. It states that a construction company notes that the time taken to construct scaffolding depends on the number of layers of scaffolding required. It goes on to say that it takes 45 minutes to construct the first layer, and then each subsequent layer takes 12 minutes longer than the previous layer. Now the first thing that we notice is that this is best represented by an arithmetic progression, and the statement that indicates that is here, because it states that each subsequent layer takes 12 minutes longer than the previous layer to construct. So what we have there, 12 represents our common difference because as we move from one term to the next, we're increasing by 12. Now, the simplest way to approach this type of question is to begin listing the first few terms in the series. So what the question tells us is that it takes 45 minutes to construct the first layer. So 45 represents our first term in the sequence. It then says that each subsequent layer takes 12 minutes longer. So what that means then, to construct the second layer, takes 45 minutes plus 12 minutes, or 57 minutes. And if we think logically, that's what we would expect. It would take more time to get the scaffold poles and the scaffold balls up into position, so it would take longer to erect the second layer than it took to construct the first layer. Now that series continues, because when we want to construct the third layer, we need to add 12 minutes to the 57 minutes or 12 minutes to the time taken to construct the second layer, the previous layer. That gives us 69, and to construct the fourth layer, 69 plus 12 is 81. And that series will continue. If we look at the questions that we're being asked, part A says, how long does it take to construct the fourth layer? Well, we've just found that, by listing the numbers in the series, it's going to take 81 minutes because that's represented by our fourth term. But just so that we can gain some confidence in the use of the equations, let's double check that answer. And we're going to use the first equation up here, which states that the nth term is a plus n minus one times d. Well, the nth term in this case is the fourth term. We're trying to find the value of the fourth term. a represents the first term in the series, 45. n represents the term that we're looking for. In this case, we're looking for the fourth term, but we see in that bracket, n minus one. Four minus one is three, and we're multiplying that by our common difference of 12. Now running that through the calculators, 45 plus three times 12 gives us the 81 that we just obtained. So we can be confident that our formula is working for us. Now let's move on to part B. Part B wants to know how long does it take to construct the first four layers? Well, what we need to do in this instance is we need to add how long it takes to construct the first layer to how long it takes to construct the second to how long it takes to construct the third and the fourth because it's the total time taken to construct four layers. Well, if we add those four numbers together, we get an answer of 252. But once again, what we're going to do in order to gain confidence in our second equation is we're going to apply that to see if we arrive at the same answer. So this time we've got the sum, n is 4, n over 2 is 4 over 2, and inside the brackets we have 2 times a, or 2 times 45 is 90, plus, open brackets, n minus 1, well, n is 4, minus 1 gives us 3, and our common difference again is 12. Now, when we run that through the calculator, we get exactly the same answer of 252 minutes. So once again, we have confidence in our formulas, but we also know that we've set these up correctly in terms of what represents the first term, what represents the second term, and so on. So now let's move on and look at part C. And part C says, how long would it take to construct the 25th layer? Well, it would no longer be viable to continue our series all the way up to the 25th term. So we have to use our formula. 
and our formula states that the 25th term equals a, which is 45, plus n minus 1. Well, n is 25, minus 1 gives us 24, multiplied by our common difference of 12, and that gives us 333 this time. Just note that that's the time taken to construct the 25th layer. It doesn't take account of the time spent constructing the layers before that. Now finally, part D wants us to find out how long it would take to construct the first 15 layers. So the first plus the second plus the third all the way up to the 15th. So again, we can use our formula. This time we're doing the sum of the first 15 terms, which equals 15 over 2 this time, because n is represented by 15. 2a is still 90. n minus 1, well this time we've got 15 minus 1, which is 14, times our common difference of 12. And when we run that through the calculator, we get an answer of 1,935 minutes. Let's look at another scenario involving an arithmetic progression. Now this scenario states that an engineering company begins mass producing a new component. In the very first week of production, 225 components were rejected. Due to improvements in the process, the number of rejects each week was seen to reduce by three, and that was every week for the first 15 weeks of production. Now again, the indication that this is an arithmetic progression and not a geometric progression is because we have a common difference, a reduction, in the number of rejects of three every week. The important thing to note here is that our common difference is negative. The numbers are reducing. And now we can apply this to the first couple of terms in the series. So the first term we know is 225. That's the number of rejects in the first week. But in the second week, the number of rejects drops by three, giving us 222. In the third week, it drops by another three, giving us 219. And in the fourth week, that number dropped by another three, giving us 216. The first part of the question, part A, asks how many components were rejected in week 15. Now we've got some confidence in our formula, we're going to go straight ahead and calculate the value of the 15th term. So the 15th term equals the first term, 225, plus n minus 1. Well, n is 15, minus 1 is 14, times the common difference, and just remember to include the minus here. The common difference is minus 3. Now, when we run that through the calculator, we get an answer of 183 rejects. Now, finally, it asks how many components in total were rejected in the first 15 weeks. So essentially, we would be adding 225 to 222 to 219 to 216, all the way up to the 15th term, which we've just found to be 183. But we're going to need to use our formula. So the sum of the first 15 terms is n over 2, or 15 over 2, 2a, 225 times 2 this time is 450, plus n minus 1 is 14, and our common difference is minus 3. Remember to include the minus each time. And that gives us an answer of 3060 rejects. In the next video, we're going to look at two very similar examples, except this time they're going to involve geometric progressions rather than arithmetic progressions. So we'll look at how we determine whether it's an arithmetic or a geometric progression, and then we'll look at how we apply the formulas in order to find our answers.